So how many of you this past holiday season had a child or significant other or family member come up to you and say, hey, I want to start streaming. I'm hearing that it is all the rage right now. And you just looked at them dumbfounded because you had no idea where to start, what to do, or what equipment they're going to need. Well, that's what we're going to go over today. So before we go into that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe and turn on those post notifications. And this is going to be a long one, but I think it's going to give you a lot of really good information. So stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, before I start going into this list, these are a lot of things that I've had experience with. I recently started doing streaming or really making YouTube videos here a little more hard and heavy this past spring. So 2020, I started doing more videos in about April or so. I did do a few in 2019, but in my opinion, they were not the best. If you go back and look at my videos, you will see what I'm talking about. Now, what are some of the first things that you should be looking for when it comes to streaming just in general? I mean, you definitely want to look at your hardware. You want to look at the software that you're actually looking to use. And you want to just look at your equipment just in general. Because there's a lot of things that you can get. There's a lot of entry-level things that you can get, but there's also a lot of mid-level and higher-level stuff. We're going to try not to talk about the higher level stuff right now because we don't want to freak you out. But there are a lot of things that you do want to consider. So one of the first things that you really need to figure out is what platform that you are wanting to stream on. So there's obviously your three big platforms. There's obviously YouTube, there is Twitch, and there is Facebook. What are these three companies? Well, Facebook, everybody knows Facebook, everybody knows YouTube. Facebook just recently absorbed Microsoft's Mixer gaming platform, which was supposed to be an alternative to Twitch.tv, which you ended up seeing a lot of big, big name streamers leave Twitch and go over to Mixer for, obviously, for that mighty dollar. Unfortunately, Mixer did not make it, and it was sold or merged with Facebook. So now you can actually go and use your software to stream directly to any of these three platforms. Now, there are pieces of software out there that will link your programs, such as OBS, to stream on all three platforms at the same time. You just need to have some really, really good, powerful internet speed to be able to handle it or else it'll be pretty jerky and pretty laggy it'll look like a zombie on thanksgiving just all over the place it doesn't really end very well uh, you'll get frustrated your kids will get frustrated mom it's lagging and you're going to have people yelling and screaming in the house because they can't figure out why things aren't looking exactly like they want it to so make sure that you Figure out what platform you are going to stream on. Also, make sure that you look at the terms and conditions for each of these particular companies because it can vary having to do with the age of your child. If your child is under the age of 16 and they're streaming something like, say, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, they could get their account banned. They could be kicked off the platform. They may be off, kicked off the platform for being too young because they may not be old enough to be able to sign any of the paperwork or any of the terms and conditions that are available for these particular platforms. Now, if you've had experience with that, by all means, please post below. I want to hear all the information that you guys have, all the feedback, even questions that you guys may have because I go through this constantly at my current job where I do sell electronics and computers and I try to help people with these particular platforms and gotten pretty good at it. So the next thing that you want to look at while you're doing this is background music. So 
say you love Metallica, you love Linkin Park, and you know everybody that you're streaming to loves them as well, or you want them to love them. Love me, love me. But you cannot play it. This is the kicker. They do have where they can flag you for copyright infringement, and there's been multiple high-level streamers who have lost their channels on, say, Twitch because of this particular issue. Now, a lot of the streamers have been trying to band together and get it where Twitch can kind of grandfather their stuff in because those videos have been out for so long, but it's not working. They're still getting flagged. Their stuff's getting muted. Their channels are being deleted. So, again, make sure if you are going to play any kind of music in the background, go to YouTube, or there's multiple other websites that you can go to for subscriptions to play non-copyrighted music. So if you have to have something in the background, just go on YouTube. Do yourself a favor and type in non-copyrighted music, non-copyrighted video game music. You have people out there that are making these and making them readily available for you to use for your streams and just for life in general. They still do get a kickback if you go onto some of these particular websites and do subscriptions to utilize this music from their software. So make sure that you are being very careful with your streams. Uh, I've even streamed on YouTube with Fortnite. Yes, I stream Fortnite. That is what a lot of the kids play these days, as well as things like Minecraft. Those are a couple of big ones, and even Roblox. So... Fortnite I played, and it saved to my channel, and it got flagged for a copyright violation. It didn't give me that infamous red X, thankfully, but it did make me either mute it, or they had to um, make it where they can play ads in there for the original person that made the music. Now, the music that it was being played, it wasn't any kind of music other than background music for the game itself, the menu music. Apparently that stuff is copyrighted and YouTube will slap you down. Twitch, not so much if it's part of the actual game. So again, that's one more thing you got to look at. So one of the biggest things you really need to look at is your computer. Computer, computer, computer. I can't say it enough. Are you streaming on a gaming computer? Or are you wanting to stream on a regular laptop? Are you wanting to play PC games? Are you wanting to play console games? Console games, we will kind of get into that a little bit later on with one of the other things that I'm going to recommend for you. In terms of a gaming computer, you want to get a halfway decent gaming computer. Do you want to play the latest Call of Duty? You want to play it at the highest settings, but you've got $500 to spend on a gaming computer? Unfortunately, that is not going to do the trick for this kind of gaming platform. Unfortunately, it is what it is when it comes to that. Something like a five, six hundred dollar cyber power kind of computer. You'd be looking at streaming Minecraft, maybe low settings of Fortnite. So you gotta really look at what the recommended settings are, look at many different aspects of what your stream is gonna be all about. So make sure you are looking at your equipment, you know, Intel i5 processor, Ryzen 5, Intel i7, Ryzen 7. Those are some great processors to get but it's also going to have to do with your graphics card, your memory, and also your storage. Solid state drives are an amazing thing. They are becoming pretty much standard when it comes to any gaming computer because they can load things so much faster than your standard regular hard drive. But many computers are going to have multiple hard drives. So just kind of look into that. How big is your solid state drive if it's like a 240 gigabyte drive? and it has a one terabyte drive on there, that's most likely where you're gonna install most of your games is gonna be on your D drive. Maybe some of your smaller stuff that you would normally play, like Fortnite only takes about, I think, 70 or 80 gigabytes. So it's not that big, unless your hard drive only has 128. But that's me, nerd talk, so I apologize for that, guys. But make sure you are checking the requirements for the games. Don't go for the bare minimum settings. You want at least recommended settings for it. 
So, sorry if that kind of bursts a few people's bubbles. I know this is going to probably shake a few trees here and upset a few people, but, you know, you want to do video editing, you want to get something with a halfway decent graphics card and processor. You can do it on lower end, slower computers, but it's going to take a whole lot longer. Like this video, it may be a 20, 30 minute video by the time I'm done. It'll take me about that long to encode it once I'm done. On a lower end computer that doesn't have a graphics card, it might take one or two hours for it to encode, maybe even longer. So it's all a matter of the quality you're looking at doing. If you're only looking at streaming, you're going to look at your internet speed. If you want to make videos like this as well as stream, you're going to need to have something that's got a little more beef to it. The next thing you need to look at is how many monitors do you want to have for your stream? Do you want to have one monitor? Do you want to have two monitors? Do you want to have three? For myself, I currently have two monitors. Now, why is two monitors very important? Well, if your son or daughter or you wants to actually stream and say you have just one screen, that's where you're going to play your game. How are you going to see your chat? How are you going to see everything like the software that you want to have running in the background? Do you want to keep shrinking the game down to check your settings and make sure everything is going through really good? Or do you want to be able to view all of this at the same time? That's where it's very important to have a second screen. Now, if you are doing streaming to say Twitch and you still want to see who's actually in your chat room, you have other options. Like you can actually go with your smartphone and you can download the Twitch app. You can go into their websites and you can check things out like that. Now, if you have a, like a cheaper little laptop that you want to use just to check your stream, you can do that. That is perfectly legal to do. You can go in there and you can still chat with people. Instead of having a second monitor, you can, and you have a, a lower end computer, just something laying around collecting dust. Use that second computer so that you can keep track of those kind of things. Why is it good to do this? Because if you just have, if you have, say you have two screens opened up and you want to have Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and all those running so you can watch things, it's going to take away performance from your computer. So it's always good to have either that second monitor or have a second computer in this case. Having that Twitch app, it'll also work like the Elgato Stream Deck where you'll be able to adjust some of your settings but also make different transitions from one scene to another. So uh, we're going to go into the Stream Deck a little bit later though. So need to decide, do you want to do one monitor or do you want to do multiple monitors? If you're going to do multiple monitors, you are going to have to have that graphics card in your computer to be able to handle multiple monitors. So, mom, dads, sorry, but unfortunately, you're going to be forking out a little bit of money here. Next thing you really want to look at is your web camera. Now, there are multiple different web cameras on the market. Logitech is obviously going to be the king of web cameras right now. Obviously, you do have your point and clicks, point and shoots, you have your DSLRs, and you also have camcorders. Those are also really good options to use as web cameras per se. But in terms of your base model ones, if you just want to get a web camera just to start, you can go get a Logitech C270. It is a $30, $40 web camera. It's an okay web camera. At least your streamers can see who you are. Be entertaining. Make some noises. Move around a little bit. So sitting there like a bump on a log doesn't always work too well. I'm guilty of being a bump on a log sometimes because I have nobody in my chat sometimes, so I don't have anybody to entertain. Um, but I'm still obviously getting used to streaming as well. It's a matter of... I'm getting the equipment, I have much of the equipment, I'm still learning though. Just like all of you are, but I think all of us are always going to be learning when it comes to this kind of stuff. So two of the best web cameras you're looking at, you do have the Logitech C920S and the C922. Those are both really good web cameras for beginning streamers if you want to have a good look and a good feel. Now I am going to have all of these things linked down at the bottom. So if you guys want to go purchase them, you can go ahead and do that. Yes, they are going to be affiliate links. Hopefully 
I'll be able to get a little bit of a kickback from them, but this is meant to help you guys out. While it, it may help me later on down the road, this is going to help you right now to get away from disappointment. Now, all the stuff I'm telling you about is all USB related, so make sure your computer or computers have enough USB ports to support these. If not, get yourself a USB hub or a docking station or something to that effect that will make you have multiple USB ports. So, I use the Logitech StreamCam Plus, which is a really good web camera. As you can see, it is 1080p. It is also 60 frames a second. Most of the other cameras you're going to see, such as the two I just mentioned, they are going to be 1080p at 30 frames a second, which is still perfectly fine. They still look great. Logitech does also have a 4K web camera as well that has been pretty popular, but not everybody wants to spend $200 on a web camera. The particular ones I'm talking about, they're you're talking like $90, maybe $100. Now, one thing about the C92 which is really good, you can actually buy that in a bundle with a microphone, which we'll go into the microphones here by Blue Yeti. So they run about $220, $230, but you get a halfway decent starter microphone. I know starter at a, at $230. I know. Don't hurt me. I don't make the prices. But it also comes with a C922 web camera. That also is going to be down below. So make sure you click on that if you want to take a look and see what people are saying about this because they really do have good reviews on many of these web cameras that you're seeing. Uh, now, going into microphones. Microphone, microphone, microphone. They are going to be very important for your sound. Now, most of the microphones you're going to find in stores such as Best Buy and Target and um, Office Depot, Staples, Walmart, they're going to be mostly condenser microphones. They are all USB based. Are they great for singing? Are they great for yelling and screaming into? Probably not the best things for those, but they are good for chatting. Now, are they going to all give you great sound? No. Some are going to be okay. You know, Blue Yeti, they're probably one of the top ones you're going to find at any of these particular stores. Like you have the Yetis, you have the Snowballs. The Snowballs are pretty much your $50, $50, $60 options to purchase. So they are great starter microphones. It's just they will pick up a lot of sound from all over the place. So if your son or daughter or you are trying to play a game or stream or record a video, with this snowball microphone and you have a lot of noise in the background like dogs all over the place kids running around you're going to pick up a lot of that background noise and it may kind of give you that muddy kind of sound muddy kind of feel uh, when it comes to is my stream good so keep in mind that you may want to consider upgrading down the road like myself this particular microphone this is the Audio Technica AT2020 USB. Not the USB Plus, this is just the regular USB. It is a condenser microphone. You can hear how it sounds. It doesn't sound bad, but I'm also using a couple filters over on my OBS software so that it can actually adjust how it sounds. So I have my gain turned up a little bit, and I have it also where some of the background noise doesn't come through quite as much, such as my keyboard typing or my mouse, so you can kind of hear a little bit of noise, maybe not a huge amount, but you can kind of hear that. Now you got to make sure too that whatever keyboard or microphone you get are not super loud. Now while the mic, well, those are really nice to have with the big mechanical clickety clackety, they could cause noise coming over the microphone. So those are things you have to look at with these particular microphones as well. What settings are you going to have to adjust? So for that, I'm going to be upgrading my stuff to a Rode Pod mic, as well as I'm wanting to get a Rodecaster Pro so I can get a much better sound. Now, these are XLR, mic XLR microphones, so they are quite a bit more expensive. The, um, the Rode Pod mic goes for about $100. Whereas the, the Rodecaster Pro goes for about $600 as a mixing board. So a lot of reviews that I've seen online have been very, very popular. 
where you can plug in four different microphones, four sets of headphones, and it gives people a really, really good experience when it comes to doing this. Plus there's other accessories like cloud lifters you can look at as well. But that's gonna be your more advanced kind of setups where you could be looking at going from, say a couple hundred dollars to add equipment to a few thousand dollars to really make it a more professional kind of sound. Now microphones, you can get just the little stand where they just set on the table. You're generally gonna find that in the Yetis and the Snowballs as well. But they do have your actual arms that you can have coming across here. So you'll see some like what I have right here. This is just a standard microphone stand. Now you have ones that can clamp onto your desk so you can move it around and still give you a really good experience when it comes to that, where you could just push it out of the way so you just don't have a bunch of wires and a microphone stand all over the place like I have. Um, some of those stands, they're fairly inexpensive. You can get some for about $30, $40 on Amazon. Same with microphone stands. Microphone stands, I mean, you're, you're just not looking at that much. Now, in terms of camera stands, eh, that gets a little crazier there. Now, going back to cameras, like I mentioned, you can still use web cameras. But if you want to go and use some of those higher quality ones, you have to start looking at things like the Elgato Cam Link, which basically plugs in through USB, and you can plug HDMI straight into that and use it like a web camera in terms of your DSLRs, like your Canons and your Nikons. And um, I'm looking at the Sony XV1. Really, really good high quality cameras. Just make sure whatever cameras you do use and whatever microphones you use, you do a little research of your own because there are a lot of reviews out there, not just here, but you're mostly looking at YouTube. You have a lot of places like B&H Photo. They have people that give reviews. You can go to the Best Buy website and you have customer review. Customer reviews. Those are some of the most unbiased reviews that you're going to get because they are from actual customers and what they've done. Don't just look at one or two. Look at the good and look at the bad. See what people have negative to say about it and see what they have positive to say about it because that's how you're going to learn. That's how I've learned about a lot of equipment myself. Next thing you're going to want to look at is your lighting. Lighting is extremely important. So, you want to have decent lighting. Myself, I have three lights. Do you need three lights? No. But starting off, you could get yourself a basic ring light. Ring lights, you can go and walk into your local Best Buy and you can get them as low as about $70 and you can get them as high as a couple hundred dollars. Some of those have other settings and features like they might have better microphones with some of those $200 ones. So uh, those are things are really to look, to look at as well. Now, you don't necessarily have to go strictly ring lights. If you go into some of these stores, they do have Elgato key lights, and they also have their own ring lights. Now, some of what I'm going to be talking about is actually Elgato related in here because they are probably one of the top companies releasing streaming equipment that has a more recognizable name like, say, Alienware or PlayStation or Xbox. It's just they are becoming the go-to company for many of these pieces of equipment that people will recognize. And they have some good quality stuff. They do have a microphone as well. I'm not as familiar with it. I haven't heard too much positive about that. But everything else, though, has been pretty much positive. Um, now, lighting, like I said, is going to be very important. Not just facing you, but also behind you. I don't have anything behind me, as you can see. So it's a little bit drab. It's a little dry, I guess you could say. I have a bunch of stuff behind me, but there's no lighting. You go into some people's channels and they have pink and blue or green and red in their background and it just makes things pop that much more which is really really cool can you afford to get rgb lighting and if you don't know what rgb is that's your red green and blue lights you can get ones that can be controlled with just a controller and some that you can control with your smartphone which is really really cool these ones that i'm talking about like the key light and the ring lights those can actually be controlled through an app on your phone as well. So kind of keep that in mind for convenience sake. Uh, you can afford them. $30, $40, $50 $40 at a store. Got some spare leftover Christmas or even Halloween lights. Put them somewhere behind you where you have that accent lighting. There are lights that you can go on to Amazon and purchase for $40, $50 for like two sets of these little LED lights. You can just kind of 
turn on, put on the ground, and adjust the lighting so you have something in the background that will make things look really, really good. Next thing you want to look at microphone or next thing you want to look at are headphones. No headphones are going to be the same. So you can get things like you've heard of Astros, you've heard of HyperX, the clouds. You've also got Corsair, which has been putting out some really, really good stuff lately. And you also have your Razer lineup. Now, people tend to gravitate towards Razer because of their brand recognition. Not just people using them, but also you look at the esports that's out there. You can't really go to an esports tournament without seeing something about these particular companies. Especially when it comes to Razer, because they're they got their fingers in everything. They have their own web cameras and microphones and keyboards and mice and I even saw they even have mouse pads. They have their pink lineup as well. So you can get yourself a pink set of Razer Krakens, I believe. And they have little kitty ears on them that light up with a nice little microphone coming out of it. Now the only downside for going with headsets is their microphones aren't always the best. So when you start using a microphone on something, it might sound kind of like this, or it sounds like you're talking through a tin can. So you have to be careful with what you're doing with that. If you're going to do halfway decent streaming, put that retractable mic back and have the mic near you, kind of like what I've got either off to the side where you're talking across it, or have it straight in front of you where you're talking straight down at it. It's a matter of what is going to be better for you. So make sure you are looking at different microphones. Again, if you can go into a store and put some of them on, do that because that is going to actually give you also a comfort level. Comfort is good. So go try them out. Read some reviews on those headsets for the love of God because people are like, oh, this $50 headset's great. Others are like, this is terrible. I've got a $200 set of headphones and this is just, ugh. I have a very basic $50 set of Astro A10s. I don't like the quality that much on them. I paid $50 for them. They're okay. I got what I paid for. Sound quality is okay, but the microphone, not so much. It has that muddy, tinny kind of sound. Uh, in terms of headphones, I have a set of Audio-Technica headphones, which are really good. I've had them for about eight years now. It is about time I need to upgrade them because the foam along the top is kind of coming apart. So, <laughs> unfortunately, they do wear out over time because the padding on them is very thin, and you do eventually need to upgrade them um, with newer technology that keeps coming out, and they just fall apart. It is what it is when it comes to that stuff. So, you also want to look at your internet speed. Your internet speed is going to be very important. What are the things you need to look at? Download speed, upload speed. Download speed is going to be very important, but in terms of streaming, your upload speed is also going to be very important because if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're paying for five megabits a second download and like one or two megabits upload, you may as well not even do any kind of streaming at all because try watching Netflix at 1080 resolution and that should pretty much tell you on what your capabilities are going to be. Do I recommend satellite? No, I don't. Do I recommend DSL? Generally, that's what you're going to have if you're out in the middle of nowhere. If you're in a city, you're going to have some place like Charter or Spectrum or something like that where you're going to be able to get that 3 and 4 and 500 megabits per second. But you also want to look at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 megabits a second upload as well. The better the upload, the better your signal is going to be and the better your stream is going to be. So make sure you are pairing it up correctly and adjusting your stream as possible. You know, 720p is not a bad resolution. Great for you to start out with. 720 at 30 frames. It's not 1080, but you know what? You're going to get your name out there. You're going to get people to recognize you. And you're going to start building that community. So that's what it's all about is building a community. Much like I'm doing here on, on YouTube. I'm building a community. Next thing you want to look at is your streaming software. There are multiple different kinds of software. The most popular ones that are out there, you have OBS and you have Streamlabs OBS. 
Elgato also has their own to stream to a couple different platforms, but the two main ones you're looking at are OBS and Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs OBS is really cool. You can actually just go in with a click of a button and you can add in your own overlays and do all sorts of adjusting. OBS, you pretty much have to go in there and add things to it because it is just the plain and simple uh, operating system. Think like Linux. It is like a Linux operating system where you can just add things in there and install stuff that will allow you to do other things. I've just recently discovered myself, even though it's been out there for a while, a website called Stream Elements. Stream Elements is great where you can link it to your OBS and you can go in there and you can find your own overlays instead of trying to make your own because nobody makes a very good overlay. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. So there's some basic ones, especially if you got kids that want to do Fortnite. They have Fortnite ones. I downloaded that one the other day. It actually looks really, really cool. So go check it out. I'll put a, post a couple pictures right here so you can see a couple pieces of it. But you also don't want to go crazy with your software. Don't go crazy with your overlays. Don't have a whole bunch of stuff at the top. Have everything on the side. And then you have your video right here and then a whole bunch of stuff. Don't muddy up your screen. Too much data will overload your streamers. So make sure you are looking at that as well. So last thing I'm going to talk about is background. So yes, I talked about lighting already. However, your background is going to be very important. One thing that I request for the love of God, clean your background. Clean it, clean it, clean it. Are you going to want to watch somebody who's got the dirtiest room in the history of mankind? Stuff crawling on the bed other than maybe a cat or a dog. Got socks and underwear all over the place. I mean, just trashed rooms people are trying to stream with. And it's drawing, it's driving people away. You want people to come to you. You don't want to be known as the dirty streamer. Unless that's your, your, your shtick there. I am the dirty streamer. Thank you for coming. Don't mind the underwear. Don't mind that it just moved. So you need to really look at that stuff too. Do you want to make people come back or do you want to send people away because they're like, meh. Now myself, if you look at my background, I do have things like autographs on the wall. I have video games behind me. I have my little Ninja Turtle arcade machine by Arcade 1UP, which is an amazing machine. If you haven't checked my other videos out about the arcade 1UP machines, go take a look at them, especially when it comes to the upcoming pinball games that have been delayed and delayed and delayed, but also Marvel vs. Capcom and things like that as well. So I think some of you guys would really enjoy some of those that are out there, not just current gamers, but also your classic gamers. Now, these are a majority of the things that I'm talking about. There are a few other things, like you can look at your Elgato capture cards, if you want to connect a game console to your computer, you have internal ones, you have external ones. You also have things, well, for instance, this is actually one of the capture cards you can be looking at. So this one can actually record all the way up to 4K. Do many people have 4K monitors, 4K gaming monitors at that? No, they really don't because those are also very expensive. Uh, these range about 170 up to about $200. It depends on if you catch it on a sale or not. Um, the other thing you want to look at, possibly, would be getting yourself an Elgato Stream Deck. Now this works really good. I kind of touched on this already when using your smartphone with the Twitch website. But this one, you can actually use it strictly with OBS. So whether you're streaming to Facebook, whether you're streaming directly to YouTube or Twitch, you can change things over just with a press of a button. Like this. So you can switch it back and forth just as, as you're programming. These are a few of the, the web cameras I was telling you guys about. But we'll switch back over here. So those are some of the things you can be looking at doing with the stream cam. Plus you can actually set it to do a bunch of different effects and have things scrolling across the screen. I haven't quite figured that out yet myself. But there are ways to do all of that. So look into it, look into maybe some better keyboards and mice for yourselves, spoil yourself, don't get a little $15, $20 mouse and keyboard unless that's all you can afford and you just want to get up and running. You want to get into the higher end stuff, 
up your equipment. If you get to where you're where you become a partner and affiliate on Twitch or even YouTube, then you can start making some money and reinvesting that into your stream because that's what it's all about. It's all about growth because you're there to be an entertainer for your viewers. I'm here to entertain you, but I'm also here to give you information right this second. And it's a lot of information, I know. I apologize. But hopefully you guys have actually learned something from it and you guys had some really good stuff to take away from this. If you guys did like all this information, please leave a comment below. But also make sure you hit that like and subscribe and turn on those post notifications. I'm going to try to do more videos like this, maybe try to talk about some of these other pieces of equipment out there that myself I'm interested in, but I think that you would be interested in as well. So until next time, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you coming out, I each and every one of you that are sticking around through this entire video as well as my other videos. Game on. Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel, guys. Check out some of my other videos for some of my other Arcade 1-Up videos and my other video game videos. Hopefully you like some of them. Leave a comment for the ones that you actually do watch. Game on.